the geese were sidelined um, and the, they soon took over and the, the dairy was sold in 97. So now our main, main partner is the geese. They're mainly grass fed, that's the thing that we're sort of trying to go for at the moment because we think that that's the best diet they can have. But they do need a bit of cereal as well, so they're, they're supplemented with cereal in the last few months. Well, they're not clipped, but um, it's partly to do with the breeding. They're not they're, they're a heavier birds, so they're not capable of flying really. But the, the breeding flock, they're a lot lighter weight because they're not fed so heavily. They do get very flighty actually, and they skim across the fields every, every now and again. Joe, so we're just walking down the road to where your breeding flock is kept in the fields down here. How many geese do you have in this field? There's 700 breeders just down here. And they live off. They begin treading around Valentine's Day. And no, a bit before that actually, but they'd start laying it on Valentine's Day. And they're still seasonal, so they're only for three or four months of the year when they're actually producing eggs. I think a goose will lay about 30 eggs per season, so and it takes sort of three months to do that. So we collect the eggs daily, uh, morning and afternoon, um, and then we store them no longer than a week, and then they, we set them into incubators on every Saturday. 28 days in the incubator, and then it's about two to three days in the hatch before they actually come out of the shell. And we use um, gas brooders. And they're in groups of sort of, well, depending on the hatch size, and normally sort of 150 under one gas brooder. They start on, on wood chippings because it's much easier for their little feet to get through, mm -hmm. and then they progress to straw later on, wheat straw. After about four weeks, they come off heat, and they're um, they're actually allowed to have a certain amount of grass. And also, we, we supply grit and sand as well at a very early age to, to fill the gizzards, so they can actually eat the grass when they're introduced to it. So then, we just put them out onto grass during the day. We probably hatch about 6,000 each year, of, of which 2,000 we rear ourselves. Mm -hmm. There's about 4,000 that are sold to local farmers. We start selling them at Michaelmas. That's when they're first available. It's a lot slower grown, so that's why it's got the flavour, I think. We, we supply a leaflet with every goose in the box, and inside of that it's got several recipe ideas, and cooking times, and instructions. If I want to feed about five people, you could probably push it to six. And um, how long would that take in the oven? We reckon on the, the normal 20 minutes a pound. Um, what we like to do is put it into a hot oven first. Put, rub the skin with a bit of salt um, so you can get it crispy. Um, hot oven to start with to crisp up the skin. And then about 20 minutes a pound. Do you prick the skin like you sometimes do we with do, duck? We do. You don't need to prick it so much on the, on the more on the side where the fat glands are. You don't really need to prick it here too much but up through the sides where the fat glands are and round back of the legs and here. <clears throat> That's where it needs pricking. Some people cook it breast down, but we don't see that. I don't see a need for that at all. And then the fat then can drain out of the bird as well. Keep that. Wonderful for the roast potatoes. And you've got some other goose products there on the shelf, haven't you? Yeah, we do um, individual goose breasts. Very much like you'd have a duck breast. Um, the same, rub some uh, salt into the skin to get it crispy and um, some people, you need to do it slowly, cook it slowly and then let it stand. It's also important to let goose stand to relax. Because it's quite a solid dense meat. Yes, so. um, it, it tenses. Um, some people can cook these and make them really tough and it's only because you don't let them stand and relax. So you've got to stand Oh, 10 minutes, quarter of an hour after cooking before you eat them. Would you wrap those in foil and cook them in the oven or would uh, you pan fry them like people I think do with duck breasts? I think they're better wrapped in foil and done in the oven. Slowly. I think pan frying is too quick. So it might end up make seeming it tough. tougher. Yes. And you've got some goose liver and also your own... Yes, we've got goose liver. That's not a very good specimen because it's early in the season. When we get closer to Christmas it'll be fatter, so it'll go paler, it'll look more like a foie gras. And it's thicker and it's. How do people it's normally tastier. eat goose liver? Lightly fried. Like Just you would with lamb's fried. liver? Yes. Um, especially with a bit of garlic and on a bit of fried bread or toast. Beautiful. Delicious by the sound of it. Beautiful. And what about your own homemade goose sausages? Can yes. Tell us a bit about those. This is our own recipe. Um, we find goose goes very well with plum. We, uh, we recommend plum sauce. So we put plum sauce in the goose sausages. 
Uh, <clears throat> they come out a little bit sweet, so they're not a breakfast sausage, they're um, more a dinner sausage, brilliant with mustard mash or something like that and a bit of gravy. Very popular, we've got a lot of people buying these. Um, they seem to be very popular. And we've got the goose fat, which put in tubs, absolutely perfect for the roast potato. You can have a decent roast potato with their goose fat. So do you parboil the potatoes first and then roast them in the goose fat, or do you just roast them in the yeah. goose fat? I think they're better parboiled. Yeah. Um, especially if you can bash them around a bit in the mm -hmm. saucepan and Makes them get them crisper, a bit fluffy I think, and crispy on the bits, yeah. yeah. I think that's best. <clears throat>